So our problem today is going over these different kinds of distributions we've talked about. So one of you asked to hear one more time, what is the difference between the distribution of the population, the distribution of a single sample, and the distribution of sample means from a bunch of samples of the same size from the population? And I agree, that's tough. There's a lot of distributions flying around. So let's go through what Dr. Taylor did one more time and see if we can get a good grip on it. Okay, let's get my ugly face out of here and start. All right, so I can start with any original distribution. So this first picture up here at the top, and this is one of the applets from StatsCrunch. Um, that distribution on the top is a normal distribution. It's a normal distribution with uh, mean 64 and standard deviation 4. So uh, the central limit theorem doesn't require that original distribution to be bell-shaped. It can be anything you want. But I'm going to go ahead and just make it a bell-shaped distribution. So that is a picture of the, let's say, the weights, or actually in this sense, it makes more sense, inches and heights of some large population of people, okay? And we talked about that we can just view the area as indicating the proportion. So if I looked at the area from 60 to 70 inches, that area out of one would be the proportion of all people whose height is between 60 and 70 inches, all people in our population, okay? Now, what if we decided to take a sample out of that population? And StatCrunch does that particularly nicely if we use a number, a sample size of 10 or less. And I'm going to use 9. And some of you probably can guess why I'm using 9 and not 10. So let's take one single sample. And what it's going to do is it's going to show me a nice histogram of that single sample of size 9 and their heights. Okay? So let's do that and count it along. Calls. Who doesn't like to count? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, poop. Oh. So it gave us a picture. Right here is a picture of the nine values. This is this picture is a frequency histogram of the nine values of heights that we got from our random sample of our original population. So this up here is the original population distribution, a picture of it. This is a picture of uh, the distribution for that single sample. So it's just a few bars. And then it dropped, it took the mean, the sample mean, the mean of this, which in this one sample, the mean was 66.5197 of these nine numbers and plotted that single value here. So down here, what we're gonna do is start collecting the mean from each of the samples of size 9 we take. So every time we take a sample of size 9, we will show the, first, the last sample up here, and then down here we're going to show a little green bar for each of the sample means. So we're going to build up a histogram, or which is a picture, uh, a visualization, of the sampling distribution, the distribution of sample means, of samples of size 9 from this original distribution of mean 64 inches and standard deviation 4 inches. So let's do one more of just a single sample and then we'll have two samples. So what's going to happen? I'm going to get nine more here. These will disappear and StatCrunch will show me the next sample of size 9 and it, then it will compute the mean and drop another bar down here. Let's watch what happens. You know I can't uh, give up a chance to count again. So here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's like a waltz. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. So now we've got two sample means. But we would like to have a bunch of sample means. Like 1,002 sample means. That probably would give us the law of large number says that the bigger, the more things that we collect, the more likely we'll collect something that looks like the underlying distribution. Okay, so I'm going to collect a thousand samples of size 9 
and it's going to each time it's going to collect a sample out of here, a random sample out of this original distribution, compute the mean and plot it down here. So let's do that. Boom. Now let's make sure we understand what we've got. This is the original population. It is bell shaped, but it doesn't have to be. It can be any shape you want. Mean 64, standard deviation 4. Here's the last of the 1002 samples we took. So there's nine gray bars, gray marks here. The blue bar, forget about the red, that's the median, but the blue bar is representing one standard deviation radius from the mean of that last sample, which was 65.1083. And down here, we have 1,002 sample means. So this frequency histogram is a picture, one of many several different visualizations we can make of the sampling distribution, of the distribution of all sample means we could get by taking samples of size 9 from the original distribution. And what does the central limit theorem say? It says regardless of the original distribution, if you take a large enough sample, and what's large enough? Well, the book says 30, but I'm telling you, you can get down to much smaller, like 9. And 1, um, the theorem of the, the results are already applying themselves, and we have ways of adjusting it to be conservative and still getting information from it. So small sample size doesn't always mean we can't tell anything. But anyway, this is going to start looking like a bell shape regardless of what the original distribution looks like. It's going to have the same mean, so that makes sense. If I take a bunch of sample means, the mean of the means is going to be the original population mean. And here's the kicker. The standard deviation is going to be significantly smaller than the original standard deviation. It's going to be what? It's going to be the original standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. Well, all my samples are size 9. Square root of 9 is 3. So this distribution down here is going to have a standard deviation of 4 divided by 3. Well, looky there, 1.3. That's pretty close. It's pretty close. Let's do a few more th samples. So another 1,000, and another 1,000, and another 1,000, and another 1,000. And looky here. This is starting to look like 1.3333333, right? 1 and 1 third, 4 thirds. So original distribution. The distribution of the very last of the thousands of 5,002 samples, this was the last of those. And this is the sampling distribution. The distribution of the sample means that this will look more and more like the distribution of all possible sample means that we could get from taking samples of size 9 from here. Now, there was a problem on the quiz, and one of the versions of it said, hey, what if I have a large population and I don't know anything about the distribution? I just know that, well, I know two things. I know it does have a mean and it does have a standard deviation. A mean of 64 inches and a standard deviation of 4 inches. Now, here's where I think some people got caught. They were ready for the standard deviation question and it asked what the mean was. Though some of you probably got the mean question, some of you got the standard deviation version. But what is the mean of the resulting distribution of sample means if I take samples of size 16? So if we took sample after sample after sample of size 16 and each time computed the mean and started creating a sampling distribution of the sample means, what would be the mean of that new distribution? It would be the same mean as the original one, 64 inches. Right? The means of our samples are going to be jumping around and centered around the mean of our original population. Think about that sentence. The means of our samples will jump around, but not a lot, and will jump around a center of the same center as the original population. And what's going to the standard deviation be? So this will be 64 inches. Boom. And what will this be? Well, the standard deviation is going to be the original standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So 4 inches divided by sample size, square root of 16, take the square root 4, so this will be 1. And as a quick check, not as a proof, but just a quick check, let's change the sample size to, uh, let's reset this, change the sample size to 
a 16, and let's run a few thousand. One, two, three, four, five. So there's 5,000. Looky there. Looks like a bell curve, standard deviation one, mean 64. All right. So I hope that helps with that, that quiz question, and I hope that helps clarify uh, the different, the three different distributions here. Uh, two of which are kind of big things: the original population and the population of sample means. And then each single sample has its own little in size uh, distribution. Okay, I hope that helps and I hope to talk to you soon.